Hi, so if you're a Trinov owner, this is for you. So recently, Trinov released some new firmware and it is firmware 4.2.16.11. And I don't know, but I suspect this is probably the most important firmware I think they've ever produced. Now they've brought some amazing features out in other firmware, but in terms of reliability and functionality, I think more is going on with this firmware than is possibly being discussed. So we've had some issues with Trinov, Barco, MadVR and other devices not always playing well together. Now, luckily these have been the exception rather than the rule, but there is something in this firmware that caught my eye. Okay, so let's go through the documentation and then we'll show you how to do the update. Here we go. So the cover page just mentions that this is update 4 to 16 11 for altitude 32 and altitude 16. Now there's an introduction, I won't go through it in great detail, but basically what it says is pleased to announce the update um, for um, all Altitude 1632 processors, and they say it's a minor software update. Fair enough. Uh, now, what they do say is it brings minor updates before merging with our main development branch in the next release. So, that's kind of interesting. Um, and then they uh, say overall that this software brings a more flexible management of various sampling rates, as well as new HDMI features and basic on-screen volume display for the new CYP board. That's the latest HDMI board for Trinov. Okay, but what it does say also is that all Trinov owners can update this at no cost. So regardless of age of your Trinov unit. So the first part of the update is sampling rate conversion. Uh, and it goes to describe that, but basically it deals with the altitude 32 and altitude 16 being able to play at varying sampling rates. Um, there were some perhaps limitations on some uh, bit streams and that looks like that's been uh, addressed. There are some quick instructions there. Again, I'm not gonna go through this because you can look this up in the document yourself. Right, the next section is about HDMI improvements. And this is for the newer boards only. And what this allows you to do is to nominate on the outputs whether um, the Trinov is the endpoint, that's where the sound stops, or whether uh, audio is passed through. So uh, that means that, for example, if you had a TV plugged into one of the outputs, you create pass through and the sound would go off to the TV and not be stopped at the Trinov. The catch with that is that you have to make sure that they can both manage the same encoded stream of audio. So for example, if it's in a bit stream and your equipment can't handle it, that could pose problems. All right, this is another good one, EDID Auto Latency. What they've done here is, and I'll read it out, with EDID Auto Lip Sync function enabled, the altitude will read the video latency provided by the video display when provided. So that information has to come from the display and if this latency is greater than the processing latency of the altitude, an additional audio delay will be added to keep both video and audio in sync. So this is a great feature. In the past, we've been adding this delay, measuring it, and on our system at least, it's been around 90 milliseconds, and that tends to sort out most of the delays, predominantly caused by the Mad VR, by the way, so just, just so that you're aware. So that's that's a good feature. Now, the other thing is on-screen display. Volume information can be displayed on screen with the volume option enabled in the OSD or on-screen display menu. And the volume and dim uh, mute function status will be displayed in the upper left corner of the screen for a few seconds each time you change the volume. Uh, it is also possible to force this with the info button on the remote control, uh, which is handy. Here's another big one. I think they've probably taken this from Denon, uh, as I recall. And this is, they've built in an HDMI cable tester and it basically says here what you can do. And it goes through the procedure. Should you want to use the Trinov now to test your cables to make sure it matches the bandwidth or output of the Trinov itself. All right, what else have we got? Finally, and this is the one that I'm really interested in. Here we go, bug fixes. Hmm, okay, listen to this. Audio dropouts with eARC. In certain instances, audio drops occur when an eARC source is selected with previous HDMI source still playing and vice versa. With this software version, this problem no longer occurs. Now, this is the interesting one for me because 
We've had a few issues with audio dropouts occurring here and there and some video dropouts. And I think if we interrupt that stream to a projector especially, then I'm guessing that the audio dropouts can probably cause uh, a video dropout as well. I'm not entirely sure on that, but certainly on a couple of our installations, not all of them, but on a couple of them we've had this issue, and I think it depends on what source devices are being used and how, uh, then uh, this seems to have fixed the problem. And that's terrific. So if Trinov have addressed this, and if it's solved the problem where we have audio cutting in and out all the time, uh, then that's fantastic. The interesting thing is leading up to this, when we've inquired, Trinov said it's not us. Barkov said it's not us. Mavyarov said it's not us. The cable manufacturers say, well, it's not us. Um, and yet it looks like this firmware may have addressed that issue. And that, for me, is what makes this firmware release so exciting in terms of reliability and functionality of the Trinov in terms of suffering uh, minor dropouts. So that's what I'm excited about here. And it's certainly on two jobs that we've done so far, this has resolved our problems. So that's good news. Anyway, uh, the next thing is how to update your Trinov. All right, so what you do here is you go to the front panel, you press the menu button, then you rotate the dial until it says setup. You hit enter, you rotate until it says ethernet, and then you hit enter, and then you can scroll down until you get to your IP address. This IP address is what you need to connect to your Trinov. From here, you can then type that IP address into your uh, browser window. And if you just type in the IP address, your Trinov will come up, but it will be a limited window. The other thing you can do is you can add the IP address and then you go IP address forward slash vnc.html and then you will get full access to your Trinov. So if you don't want to mess it up, just add the IP address and you should be able to access all the things you need. You then go to the info section, you go to updates, you request the latest update and see if it's available for you. And then it will produce the update. Now, please remember, if you're going to do an update, it is critical that you turn your amplifiers off so that if something occurs during the update, um, then you're not going to risk your system and toast your speakers or your amplifier because turn off will go, well, we warned you. So please make sure your amps are turned off until the update is complete and keep your Trinov online connected to the internet until the whole update process is finished. I hope that makes sense and I hope this has been useful to you. We'll see you soon.